In this example, take a moment to read this question carefully because it's quite wordy and the words are actually quite important to make sure we understand the context of this problem. So we have windmills generate electricity by transferring energy from wind to a turbine. A study was conducted to examine the relationship between the wind velocity, so the wind velocity, and electricity production and amper for one particular windmill. For the windmill for the windmill, measurements were taken over on a 25 randomly selected days. And the regression equation for predicting electricity output based upon wind velocity is given by this. Wind velocities were from 10 to 40 miles per hour. The coefficient, the correlation coefficient was this value here. State the independent variable. Well, x is our independent variable, and if we're thinking about electricity production based upon wind velocity, the independent variable must be the wind velocity because the electricity is based upon the wind. B part says, how much more electricity would the windmill be expected to produce on a day when the wind velocity is 25 miles per hour compared to when the wind is 15 miles per hour? Show how you arrived at your result. Well, we want to know how much more electricity would happen between these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the electricity for both these days. So if I go to my equation, if I type in 0.240x plus 0.137, and uh, let's just graph and see where we are. Let's see where not even close so let's just go to our standard window okay and I want to find 15 and 25 velocity I'm gonna make my window I don't care about negative wind velocities I'm gonna go out to well up to 40 so let's go up to 40 and we'll go by fours well, one of the things I can set my Y scale now if I go zoom fit which I think that might be zoom zero. Zoom fit uses the X's I put in to make the graph. Okay, so now if I find the velocity when Y is equal to, or X rather, is equal to 15, this gives me a Y value of, if X is 15, it means I have 3.737 amperes amps. If I do 25 miles per hour, 0 0.24, oh, let me try that again. Plug in 25, 0 0.240 times 25 plus 0 0.137. Here, if I trace and I get 25, I get 6.137. And so how much, I want to find out how much more electricity is produced. Well, this is how much is produced by 25 miles per hour. And this is how much is produced by 15 miles per hour. Subtract the two, <coughs> and I'll get 0.17 minus 3.737. And I get 6.73017. Oh, minus 3.737 is 2.4 amps more. So I found the amps for 25 and the amps for 15 miles per hour. Subtracted the, the difference. C part says comment on the R value. Well, the R is equal to 0 0.873, which is a strong linear correlation between the variables <coughs> because this value is quite large, quite close to 1, and it is also positive. D part says, another researcher using his this regression claim claims that if the wind reaches 50 miles per hour, the electricity production will be 12 amperes. Well, if we use our, our equation, I'm going to use it, but then we'll talk about what this value means. If I use my equation, 
and I'll trace the value, trace the value at 50. I can see that it's really close to 12, but here's the thing that you have to catch. I have to recognize that the wind velocities are only from 10 to 40. 50 is outside of that range, so he cannot, this is not, not a good claim because it is extrapolation. And we know our values, if we're going to use this as a model, we must pick values that are inside the range given. E part says the mean value of the wind speeds of the data is 26.3 to determine the mean electrical output of the data. Well, if the, that means X bar is 26.3, that's the mean of the X value. On every regression line, the point X bar, Y bar is always on the line of regression. So if I want to find Y bar, I just simply plug in my plug it into my equation 0 0.240 times 26.3 plus 0 0.137 use my calculator I'm going to trace at 26.3 and I get 6.45 amps and that's to three significant figures so using the regression line, we can find out lots of information.